<laughs> and then, <laughs> and then if there's any verses, if anybody's memorized those verses, uh, we can say those. I don't know if we have a lot of uh, participation, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. And uh, then normally, after this week, there'll be a quiz. Now, not necessarily that we're going to grade, not necessarily that uh, um, it's going to mean anything as far as eternity goes by any means, but it's going to be a quiz, and I'll, I'll say this now for next week's quiz, it's pretty much just the outline from this week, so have to know the, the words that you fill in. Uh, then we'll go over the lesson, and then we'll head downstairs for a game, which is called... Fruit Basket. Fruit Basket? Ish. Ish. Fruit Basket? <laughs> Ish. And uh, even the adults, I would think, are invited to play if you so desire. It may get a little wild and crazy, but if you desire and uh, you do not care about bodily injury or harm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, uh, as well, then we have some ice cream downstairs and a ton of different toppings, and uh, that's how we close out the night. Well, we want to start with a couple songs. We'll be back up here. Complete in V. Roll start. For the, the teams, on teams, um, I think we'll have to have teams for the game. So you do you two and them too. Want to throw some boys on there as well? Yes, throw some boys. So should we do? Not that we want to make this a Millers against the others, but we could do the back row against the front row. Does that work? You good? That means three against four though. We don't really need a team for this game. No, we need to do the game. So in the future, we'll, we will have teams, and hopefully Becca will be back here, and we'll have her on the team as well. And then we'll probably divide up, so not all the Millers against everybody else. But um, we'll work on some teams, 
And uh, there will be points. And again, since this is the first time doing this, uh, we didn't know in advance about any points, but we'll have points for being here, we'll have points for bringing a friend, we'll have points for, certainly a lot of points for memorizing the verses, especially since that's a lot to memorize. And uh, as well, probably points in the game time, or like today's points will be reversed in the game time if, we, if we're doing points today. Uh, well, we'll be working on that. And then every time that we do this, have a team meeting, there will be prizes for the verses, which are Rice Krispie Treats or Granola bars. bars. And then for the team that has the most points by the end of the night, we have some big old candy bars. And uh, we'll go from there. We will see how this goes. If everybody's pretty much, nobody did homework, nobody did memorize the verses, then obviously there's no points except for being here. And uh, the teams are tied. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we'll, we'll move forward with that uh, here in the future. In your books, and it looks like page 11, if, if my book is the same page number, are, is your homework <clears throat> for what should have been done. My own, oh, good, you got the first questions done, very good. We'll go over the devotional, and uh, then we'll go to our verses here. But on day one, whatever day that is, there's only three days, and I think all the lessons only have three days, so... Theoretically, it'd be great if you did this on separate days. If you're trying to get this done, like on Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon while we are eating, then it's probably going to be all on the same day. But the ideal is to do day one, day two, day three on a separate day each day. Uh, but on day one, Luke chapter one, verses 39 through 55, we have Mary's praise. It's a prayer and a song that Mary gives. What did Mary rejoice over in verse 49? Anybody can throw out an answer if you have it. Any ideas? Should be. Any answers? Great things for her. Perfect. God who is mighty did great things for her. So Mary rejoiced over number two. What attributes of God does Mary refer to in her song of praise? That's several verses there, 47 to 54. Uh, several descriptions of God. Mighty, mighty number one. Her savior. Her savior. As far as I got. Oh. <laughs> there's, there's the end of Kate's homework. <laughs> <laughs> Mighty, merciful, strong, provider, helper, faithful are uh, some of the words that were in those verses. Why do you think Mary so readily praised God when she learned about Jesus' coming birth? Because there's no specific, that's more of a, why do you think? You, could you imagine being Mary and being told that you're going to give birth to the Messiah? Uh, that would be quite a, uh, a, a reason to praise God, uh, just the overwhelming aspect of that. Uh, but as well, just the, uh, as a Jew waiting for the Messiah to come and being told he will. Day two, a backup. Now, maybe this, is, this was probably a hard one to get to because it probably took a whole day just to find a backup. But in Habakkuk chapter 3, the first 19 verses, we have a backup prayer of praise and trust. How does Habakkuk portray God when God defended Israel in the past? Can't call on Kate anymore. Relax. It portrays him as powerful and just because he defeated the wicked. What is Habakkuk's response to his current trouble in verse 16? <laughs> this is going as well. <laughs> He will wait for God to defeat his enemies. Obviously, God was powerful in the past. In fact, he's going to wait for God to continue to do that in the future. That's a challenge for us. How does Habakkuk demonstrate his faith in God? Verses 17 through 19. Even through suffering, he will rejoice and trust in God as his strength. Day three. I wonder if it's just because they can't hear me. No, it's working for me, so okay. I can hear it perfectly on my phone. Okay. 
In number three, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 27 through chapter 2, verse 10. Hannah's prayer of praise. Whom did Hannah credit for her answered prayer? You should even know that loud again. God. God! What is the theme of Hannah's prayer in chapter 2? Don't want to be the same word. Same answer. Praising God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 and 31. How do you think this passage relates to Hannah's experience? Any answers on that? Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. We see your calling, brother, how that not many wise men have the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, the base things of the world, and the things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. That, verse 29, no flesh should glory in his presence. Uh, certainly uh, a lot in comparison to Hannah there. And uh, she made it very good. A handmaid of the Lord is like Mary as well. And uh, how God chooses many times us. Uh, we who are not necessarily great in anybody else's eyes, but God chooses us to use us. And, and what a, a privilege that is. Day three. Next time, we have to decide. Are we going to do this in two weeks? Will you guys be around in two weeks? Should we do this? In two weeks? Yes, yeah, so in two weeks. You'll have two weeks. If you want to memorize these verses, that will be great. Otherwise, we will have new verses. Looks like James 5, 13 through 16. If you want to memorize both passages, that would be great as well. And, <clears throat> Kate, if you want to do your homework, that would be wonderful as well. Maybe during your break this week, you could uh, have somebody help you, because obviously she did it <laughs> does anybody have a, a verse? I think once once we get into the swing of this, and we really want to encourage even the adults to get uh, memorizing these verses. I know we kind of uh, decided to do this and, and kind of swept on it quickly here. But it, what I'm hoping for in two weeks is that we can uh, just take like five minutes and we can find find a partner and uh, say verses to each other, and kind of be on an honor system of, of whether or not you decide it. Um, I have not heard, I know my wife is close, but I haven't heard if anybody has memorized. Did anybody memorize the entirety of those verses? No? Kind of? A little bit? Anybody want to say or try to say it? Without it on the screen? Yes. <laughs> I'm sure I won't. No? Okay, I'll try. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit, and I learned it yesterday. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branch. He that abideth in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, for apart from me you can bear nothing. This is the part about the branches in the fire. If you abide not. If you abide not, you are like a branch. No, then it's it withers. The branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. And then if you abide not. If you abide in me and my word is in you, ask whatsoever you will and it will be given to you. I was slaughtered, but <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be fantastic. <laughs> we will go over. Anybody else want to try? It's obviously on the screen, so it's not that hard to cheat, but anybody back. else want to <laughs> Otherwise, we will have my wife stand up here and slowly eat the rice. No, no. Watch us smacking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hip to side of the all right, so new verses in two weeks. Uh, we will still give credit if you memorize these verses because these are kind of uh, the paramount, kind of foundational to the entire study. But if you can memorize these, great. If you memorize the next one's great. If you memorize both passages, that's impressive, and that'd be super great. Super and uh, we'll go from there. What we want to do now, then, is start back, I think, 
I don't know how it's labeled in your books, because I only have a teacher book. Wherever the lesson is, we want to go to the beginning of the lesson. And we want, I want to kind of go over to begin with what, what we want to accomplish in uh, going over a topic of prayer. Obviously, prayer is a topic that whether we are the youngest, which I see will be one of the cruises, <laughs> to the oldest, which we won't mention names, <laughs> we all can uh, use the challenge of, of prayer and uh, how to pray. But here's what I don't want this to be. I don't want this to make us feel guilty that we aren't praying enough. Although I hope that we, through the course of these eight weeks, or four months, doing it twice a month, uh, I, I hope that we change in the way that we do pray. But if all we are doing is feeling guilty about it, I'm, I'm afraid that we're going to respond in the, the wrong way of correcting that. Uh, and so this isn't just, I don't want this to be eight lessons of, you should pray more, you should pray more, you should pray more, because that, that, that's, that's not, not necessarily the point. Because the second point that I don't want this to be is that we just feel like we need to spend more time in prayer. Well, you know, last week I only prayed maybe once, and so this week I'm going to try to pray twice. And, and it's, um, well, let me just illustrate it this way. Could you imagine this happening in, in, uh, in real life? A, a scenario like this, and this is obviously very pretend, very, very fake, but uh, Anna, in the back row back there. Anna, it's so great to see you. I just want to wait. wait. Okay. Hold on, Anna. You gotta, you gotta figure something out here first. Ah, there you go. All right, so good. it was great to see you, Ann. Oh, wait. Kate just sent me something that was pretty funny. I responded to that. That was hilarious, Kate. Uh, I can't type anything, actually, because I don't want to stop my stopwatch. But you get the idea I'm typing something there. That's a really funny, Kate. I, you know, it's, it's great to have you in the front, Kate. That's what, okay. okay. So, Anna, how's it been going? I, I hope it's been doing very well for you this week. Uh, school's starting pretty soon, I imagine. And... Um, I don't really know what else to say to you, Anna, but um, hey, thanks for uh, making those desserts a few weeks ago. I saw people were very happy with it. I didn't personally have any, but I don't normally have the desserts back there anyway, ever, even though my wife makes them. But I saw lots of happy faces, and I know that that meant that they were good, so thank you for doing that. And, um, and uh, so, well, let me check. <laughs> Can't be funny again. <laughs> I'm pretending to type, but I'm not really typing. All right, yeah, so Anna. So, um, um, boy, I'm lost. I don't really know what else to say. Just have a great day. Have a great day, Anna. Kate, it's great to see you, Kate. You know, I was just having a conversation with Anna. Uh, it really seems that like, everywhere I go, Anna is there. You know, I go to the store and it's there. I go to Walmart and it's there. Uh, I go to church and and, uh, and she's there. And uh, I know you and know Anna as well. And you know, this is oh, I forgot. I made it like a minute and a half talking to Anna today. <laughs> and uh, the the bad thing is, is Anna and I are really good friends. And I don't know if I talked to her at all last week. But I, I like how we can just talk about anything. We can just talk for hours. And uh, if you know today. I talked to Anna for a minute and a half, so it was wonderful. Next week, I'm hoping that I can maybe speed some three minutes with Anna. And uh, uh, because, you know, I mean, can you imagine that kind of a scenario? Uh, we could have a conversation with each other and say, you know, it's just great to all the things that God does and, and all the blessings that God brings us. And we know that everywhere we go, God is there. But we don't want to get to the point where we're starting to stopwatch saying, good, good news, I got a minute and a half with God this week. That's not what prayer is about, because prayer, as we're going to look at, is about communication. It's about a relationship. It's about an interaction with God, and, and we don't ever want prayer to be start the stopwatch, and i got to see if I can pull in three minutes today. Uh, that's not what prayer is about. Not any more than if we were going to do the same thing with one of our friends. We, we wouldn't, no, I would hope, we wouldn't <laughs> do that with our friends. Oh, time out. I'm done. <laughs> Bye, Anna. <laughs> Oh, we wouldn't do that to a friend. Uh, in fact, I know as girls, the conversation goes on and on and 
on and on. And then they set part separate ways and all the way home, it's, it's this. And the continuation of the conversation goes on. And why? Because they're friends and they're talking. And they might not even be talking about anything, but they're still talking and communicating because they're friends. And I would dare say, except probably now today they will, but I wouldn't dare say that at any time they'll say, hey, we got five minutes today. Nor will they probably say, you know what? Anna is such a great friend. I hope that tomorrow I can squeeze out 10 minutes. You know, I think there's a problem when we begin to put God on that kind of a schedule where God is good and he's so, he so blessed us in so many ways. And, well, got to figure out how to talk to him for X amount of time. Because if I'm not doing that, then I'm not, I'm, I'm failing. And, and so when we look at this aspect of prayer and communication for all of us, for the teens, for the younger ones, for those older we want prayer to be such that it's not a feeling that I've got to put in my time. Every day, I talk to God. And uh, that gets a, it's a drudgery. No more than if we woke up every morning saying, you know, I didn't wake up this morning saying, i got to talk to Anna today. <laughs> you know, if I woke up saying that in my mind, then I'd have to question myself, am I really that much of a friend of Anna's? <laughs> if I'm waking up saying, I got to talk to Anna today. <laughs> if just by that mental thought, you'd say, you're not a very good friend with Anna, are you? But if we're waking up saying, I can't wait to get to church so I can see Anna again, so I can tell her all about, well, the nothingness of my day. <laughs> There's a great friendship that's taking place there. And, and we're not sitting there going, um, uh, well, uh, well, sometimes they, that does happen, I think. But we're not, we're not, if we truly are friends, we're not falling into the trap of, what do I say now? It's not time to stop talking yet, and I gotta come up with something more to say. Uh, well, thank you for this. Thank you for that. And and so as we jump into to the lesson in regards to prayer, what is prayer? Is ultimately when we put a kid. Uh, prayer is, is obviously communication, and I intended, but it got wet, and uh, so that didn't help. But I intended on bringing a plant. Rebecca loves plants, and uh, since she's not here, I didn't bring one. But she loves plants, and she's always trying to resurrect plants that are pretty much dead, and she brings them back to life. And, and her house has turned into pretty much every window now has plants in them that she's trying to work with. And so she's got something that she's pretty proud of, more so because they once were pretty much declared dead, and now they have green life to them. But over there, the other side of the shed, is a branch that fell off a tree somewhere. And uh, it is dried up. The leaves are all dry and crinkly. That I'm certain if you put it on a fire, it will poof and, and be instantly gone. And I was going to have her plant sitting here. So just imagine Becca's plant here. Imagine Becca sitting over there with a lot of smile on her face because Dad's got her plant up on front that she's so proud of. He's got a nice green everywhere. And then right next to it, leaving debris all over the table, is this plant that has leaves that are withered and, and uh, crackly and, and just falling apart. And what would be the difference between those two two Specimens behind me. One is dead, one is green. In this case, one's a plant, one came from a tree, but in the very reality of it, one is still connected to its source, and the other has fallen off of its source. And as a result, the one still has life, and the other one now has death. Now, that's saying if we don't pray that before long we will die. That's not what that's meaning, but, you know, the life comes from the connection with our God. Again, if you abide in me, uh, the whole aspect of, of John 15 there, if you, if you abide in me. So prayer is communication with God. I think that's one of, I think everything underlined on the screen is something that you have to fill in, give you that heads up. So if you have your lesson, you see something underlined on the screen, it's a hint. That's the word you want. So prayer is communication with God. And, and the reminder that this is not something that is a drudgery, should not be a drudgery, it's not something that we can... Uh, um, force ourselves or feel like we should be forced into. Um, prayer is communication with God. Let me back up a little bit. John Bunyan once said this, and I should have this on the screen because it's pretty in, in depth. But it's John Bunyan said, prayer is a sincere, sensible, affectionate pouring out of the heart or soul to God through Christ and the strength and assistance of the Holy Spirit for such things as God has promised or according to his word for the good of the church with submission in faith to the will of God. 
for our purposes, here's a simpler definition of what prayer is. Prayer is communication with God from our hearts, for our needs, for God's praise, through Christ, according to God's will, for his glory. And ultimately, that was, I just gave you all the answers for the whole lesson uh, right there in that definition. But going back to prayer is communication with God. When we pray, we communicate with a person in a relational way. Just as when I was talking to Anna, or pretending to be talking to Anna, because I really wasn't saying anything to Anna. In fact, there really was no interaction with Anna. In fact, Anna didn't say anything back to me, because literally I didn't give her any time to say back to me, nor did I say anything that required a conversation back to me. Prayer is with a, a, the, a person in a relationship way, in a way that we're communicating with God. Now, public prayer, I, let me differentiate. Public prayer is a little different, because we're praying publicly, we're still not praying to people. We're praying to our God. Um, but what we want to look at for our, our purposes in this study is our time with our God throughout the week, throughout the day, uh, throughout our life, to be reminded that this is a, a conversation with, with our God in a personal relationship type of a way. And uh, that does not mean that it needs to start out um, with the normal, and I'm jumping ahead a few points, but we don't have to have the normal introductory stuff and the normal ending stuff. In other words, I don't start talking to Anna, dear Anna, and then I don't conclude with amen. Praying to God in a relationship way, we'd be talking to God in, in just in the way that we would talk to anybody else. Now, if I was, and I'm not, because I'm obviously married, but if I was a young beau, and which I am not because I'm not. <laughs> if I was a young beau and I was talking to Anna or writing to Anna, I'd probably say, Dear Anna. <laughs> but other than that scenario, communication in a relationship way, as I once did to my before my life there, um, there, there was a, a relationship of, of Dear Jennifer. And stars are just sprinkling that much, or tinkling, whatever you want to sprinkling, sparkling, <laughs> twinkling. They started doing what they do out there. It just got a little brighter, and the moon was brighter, the sun, you know, everything seemed to be different. Dear Jennifer. But you know, the very real, reality is, is talking to a, a person in a relationship way is, is very personal. And it doesn't require all the things that so many times we, we fall into. You imagine when in Genesis chapter 3, when uh, this is after the sin, after Eve had already taken of the fruit and shared it with her husband, Adam. Remember what verse 3 says? And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Can you imagine living in a day when God came in the flesh and just talked to them? I can guarantee you that when Adam, now I'm not trying to pick away our prayer life or how we pray, but I don't imagine that when God did that in the person, that Adam addressed God in such a way that it was, dear Heavenly Father, <laughs> and concluded with, amen, or in Jesus' name, amen. They just talked. They just walked and they talked. Now, we need to have reverence for our God, and there's things that we need to do, but can you imagine this is how God intended his relationship with man? Literally, let's go for a walk and let's talk. It's literally how God created man and created us to talk with God. And, and so prayer is, when we pray, we communicate with a person in a relationship way. God still desires to have the same kind of relationship. To so literally just have a, let's, let's go for a walk and talk. And uh, if you've ever taken a walk with my son Josiah, you know that every moment of that walk, every step that he takes, which is like three steps for every one step that I take, but every step that he takes contains about 30 words. And it's the whole walk. And uh, I have to work hard at uh, uh, breathing <laughs> as well as listening and uh, trying to catch even half of what he's saying, because it just goes on and on and on and on, and so much information and so many things to share and, and so many things to look at, and, and uh, I made it to that far, and now I need to come back and look at this, because, Dad, you missed this over here. And, and it, it's just a walk. That's what Adam and Eve one time had, because that's what God desires with us, to have that kind of relationship with us. 
When we pray, uh, uh, certainly a great place to start as to consider praying with God is the Psalms. Psalms provide a good example of communicating with God. Uh, I wrote out some of these verses here. In desperation, David says this, But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. Psalm 39, 12, Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not the peace, or thy peace at my tears. For I'm a stranger with thee, and a sojourner as all my fathers were. David also said, In happiness, Psalms 88, verse 6, or verse 4, I'm sorry, Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Psalms 86, verse 5, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Verse 10, For thou art great and doest wondrous things. Thou art God alone. Verse 12, I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. In sadness, and there's a lot of verses of this, but only one reference here. Chapter 80, verse 4, O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy so David points out that a prayer, a relationship with a person of God is just simply communicating in desperation and happiness and sadness, just like we communicate with each other. I'm happy today. I'm thrilled today. I'm, I'm so excited today. I'm having a hard day. I, I'm not feeling very good today. I'm, I'm sad today. It, it's a communication with God. And I think sometimes God who knows all of our thoughts, when we come to him in prayer, we try to put up this facade and... Uh, you know, if I act like all is well, God won't know the difference. Well, well, God does know. Prayer is a communication with God. As we pray, we need to remember that we are communicating with God. What truths about God should keep in mind so that we can pray personally? What are some things about God that we should keep in mind when we pray to Him? So we keep it at a personal level. Again, I think there is a difference when we're praying publicly than when we're praying because. Prayer is not just a, I did it at that time. Uh, a prayer should be about a life. So what are some things that we think about in our regards to our God that will help us keep our prayers personal? Really no textbook answer. Just kind of add your thoughts. Mine's always how much he cares. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And think about the person who loves you the most. They're not even close to how much God loves us. And we can just think on that thought. Every time we come before him in prayer, think on the fact that there's nobody that loves me more than my God, and I'm about to talk to him. I'm communicating with him. Uh, his mercy kind of coincides with that, uh, about the mercy of our God, his forgiveness. Even just the fact that my God kind of goes along the same theme of, of his love, but he loved me so much that he sent his son to die for me. And now I'm about to talk to him. Uh, oh, just the overwhelming nature with God. Think about it. Secondly, prayer should then as well be from our hearts. The spiritual part of us, often described as the heart, because obviously when it says from our hearts, it does not mean the, the, the four-chambered muscle in our chest that pumps at approximately 80 beats per minute there. It's talking about the, the spiritual part of us that communicates with God who is the Spirit? John chapter 4, remember the uh, woman at the well. And in regards to where do we pray? Do we pray in Jerusalem or do we pray up on that mountain? My relative, she said, pray up there in that mountain. Others go to Jerusalem. Where should this that we should pray? And in John chapter 4, verse 24, Christ says, God is a Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And uh, we need to be reminded that our, we pray from our hearts. And in other words, Again, public prayer, the idea is that you hear me when I pray, that we hear each other when we pray. It's not that I'm praying to you, nor is it that you are praying to me, but it's that we're praying together as you go before God. But personal prayer is not something that I necessarily have to speak a word. Because God is the one that is in spirit, and, and he doesn't need to hear words, but it's a message from the heart. And uh, I think it's great to speak words, and I don't think that's certainly wrong, because it helps our thoughts. Uh, but ultimately, prayer in a relationship, personal way, is come from the heart. And it's not only dictating the words that I say from the heart, but it's how I'm praying from the heart. And it literally could be, and I hope the teens have already lived this out, but if not, you someday will. 
It could literally be that you're facing a, a circumstance in life and it's a Lord didn't help. That's all it is. And it's just from the heart. Never said a word. But from your heart, in your mind. I need help right now. It could be you're driving and you have that split second uh, a deer runs out in front of your vehicle. And uh, you don't have time to even, you don't even have enough time to hit the brakes or my daughter's going to know that I, what I mean here. Don't swerve. <laughs> you don't have time to think about not swerving. Keep driving straight. Don't swerve off the road. I've been to too many accidents where people have swerved and they wind up hurting themselves more. But we don't have time to, to react, but we have enough time in our minds to cry out for help for our God because a relationship way from our hearts. And it's the, spirit, the spiritual side of us. Uh, as a heart, we're speaking to God in, in spirit. Because why? He knows our thoughts and our attitudes. Prayer is not about some eloquent words that I have to say. And I, I know, again, in public prayer, we often have those words or phrases that we often repeat. They're often easy to repeat. But our God knows our thoughts. He knows our attitudes. And this will relate to the teams. At least I have phones. They're communicated by text. And uh, you have to put in an emoji because you want them to know that you're, you're trying to be funny. Or you're putting this little sad, crying face because you want them to know that this isn't funny. <laughs> I'm being serious here. This is sad to me. Don't laugh at me. And so we put in those emojis so that by text, people know what we're doing. Or if, you, or if you're like Josiah, you'll send a text and you have a fire truck and police truck and thumbs up, thumbs down, smiley face, all kinds of, and you don't know what's going on. Well, you know, our God doesn't need any emojis in our prayers because he already knows our thoughts. He already knows our attitudes. He knows what's going on. So think about it. What will we think about if we pray from our hearts? And how can we keep our thoughts engaged while praying? I have heard, and I've done this many times. Never woke up in the middle of the night and uh, you've been told, just pray. And you, and you begin to pray, and then what happens? This is what happens sometimes to me. You fall asleep. <laughs> Right in the middle, and you're praying about different things that are on your mind, and before long, the alarm's going off. Oh, I just fell asleep right in the middle of, of, of praying. And uh, I've not slept for hours, and now I'm getting woke up. Uh, there's the very reality of, of what we think about if we pray from our hearts, and how can we keep our thoughts engaged while praying? I won't ask for any raised hands, but how many times have we, when someone else is praying, had our minds wandering? If I, I, I know for a fact, probably if I pray too long at the end of the service, like this morning, um, and the food starts wafting upstairs, I know that all your minds are going to lunch. And uh, so I, I've got to keep it shorter in my closing prayer because I know food is, the smell of food has got people saying, mm, what is that for lunch? Oh, is that, uh, who is it? Uh, so I know how easy. But no different than my illustration with Anna. I can't do this. So, Anna, how's it going to... Oh, wait. Uh, uh, um, Kate, just... Uh, you know, I, 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 I got to keep my focus. Which that... Did you see the message? From Rebecca. From Rebecca, yeah. Yeah, I fixed it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Speaking of a complete distraction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's real life. Yeah, it's real life. It's real, real life right life. there. <laughs> Becca is watching, but we have a time limit on how much she could be on Facebook because she watched the morning service. <laughs> Our little circle just kicked her off Facebook. <laughs> so we have to adjust it so she can continue watching. How can we make our language and prayer sound natural and less formal? And what about filler phrases that we use in our prayers? Now, again, uh, I, we want to separate from public prayer as far as personal prayer because, again, I don't want prayer just to be, I did it at this time, now I'm done for the day. Prayer should be such that it's a life, and, and these filler phrases are really unnecessary as we consider Praying as a relationship way to our God. You think not? We need to be prayer as communication for our needs. God does indeed promise to give us all good things, according to Psalm 84 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield, and the Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will be withhold from them that walk uprightly. Does that mean then that God's going to give us new cars every time we want one? Probably not. Does that mean when these two ladies go into a rainbow resource tomorrow that they're suddenly going to get a $5 raise? <laughs> that would be amazing. 
but probably not. But what that does mean is that God is going to give us all good things as far as he defines them. Not necessarily all the ways that I define it, but I need to keep that in mind when I realize that I pray to God for our needs. But also God promises to provide for us. Matthew chapter 6, we have, uh, uh, verse 33 concludes with, that, that we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all those spiritual, all, I mean, all those physical needs that we have will be added on to them. Think about it. What are some spiritual needs that we have? Again, don't have to raise your hand, but how often are our prayers solely based on the physical? How often do we pray because we need, we need, we need, or in intercessory, we pray for someone else, but they need, they need, they need. How often do we pray for the spiritual things that really we need? Um, it's been kind of joking. You, know, you should never pray for for patience, uh, but there's so many things like patience that we need to have, spiritually speaking. How often do we pray for our spiritual needs? And how does God provide for those needs? How does God provide for those spiritual needs? Um, sadly, many times it's testing, it's, it's trials, it's learning, uh, but they're necessary. For needs, think about it. For his praise. <clears throat> Express thanks to God for his, number one, actions, and number two, his Character for his praise, what he has done, and who he will always be. God deserves praise because he is the really, there's a whole bunch of answers you can put there, but the one they have is greatest because he is the greatest. This is an interesting thought. God is not uh, an egotistical guy that is just looking for us to say everything great about him. It is not like God is like on the, uh, what do you call that? Like a pageant. <laughs> Marching past us, waiting for us to elaborate on all the amazingness of our God. He doesn't need us to do that, but he longs for our praise. Why? Because he wants our focus to be on him, not on us. And just like when we compliment a friend. Hey, you did a great job on that. Hey, you did well on that. Uh, whatever it might be. We're not doing that because we want our friend to... Be more egotistical. Pat on the back. Oh, I am so great, aren't I? But but we're just communicating with our uh, with our friend about who they are and what they've accomplished. Same way, so should prayer be. Some things to think about besides prayer. What are other ways we can praise our God? It's by our very hearts, our very lives, uh, the way we live. How do we get to know what God is like so that we can praise Him? His word. He tells us all that we need to know about our God. Not only for his, praise, for his praise, but through Christ. We have access to God through Christ's sacrificial death. First Timothy 2, by his intercession for us, and as well. And family Caitlin's. Well, this is second John, isn't it? No, first John. First John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And as well, Christ works gives us confidence when we come to our God. Hebrews talks about the confidence. We come boldly before the throne of grace because of what Christ did for us. So it is through Christ. Which is why we often encourage you to say, in Jesus' name, amen. Because through Christ that we are able to pray. Through Christ that we have that means to pray. And uh, we can have great confidence in that regard. Continuing on, number six. It's according to God's will. God's will is his macro level, which means the biggest level, kind of the umbrella over it all, omniscient plan for his glory and our good. To pray for God's will to be done requires us to have an attitude of humble submission. Because here's how we live life. We live life on the micro <laughs> direction where everything is just, the umbrella is just big. It goes right over us however wide our shoulders are, and then down. And that's our micro look of life, and it's just focused on us. But our God has a macro focus, and it's about our good, but it's for his praise. And so we need to be praying in regards to his will, which means not my will. I have to be submissive in that regard. And I think lastly, right? Uh, for God's glory. Glorify God means to give him the honor, worship, and praise he deserves. Glorifying God means to give him honor, give him worship, 
or give him praise. When we pray purposefully and humbly, we demonstrate that God is special to us. Now, it would be hard from where we started to convince you that, you know, Anna is a very special person to me because my conversation with Anna was pretty, pretty weak. <laughs> and it would be hard to tell Caitlin about how amazing Anna was when my, clearly my communication with Anna is not so good. When we pray purposefully and humbly, we demonstrate indeed that God is truly special to us, that he is truly all that we say he is, and it's reflected by how we communicate with him and how we pray with him. So how can I change? Do I really know what prayer is? This is still in the books, right? Do I really know what prayer is? Do I believe that prayer is a vital part of my relationship to God? What does my prayer life reveal about my relationship with God? What does my prayer life reveal about my knowledge of God? It's amazing when you, the more that you study the Word of God, the more that you know of God, maybe how that impacts our prayers. Um, what distracts me from prayer? That's a great question because whatever it is that distracts us from prayer is probably what we put a priority on in our life. If we're praying and the smell of food distracts us, it's probably because at that moment, at least, food is more important to us than communicating with God. And we need to make sure we have everything in the right order. Do I talk naturally to God, or do I use some sort of shallow, formal language? Uh, to do I pray for my spiritual needs? Or do I only inform God on my physical wish list? Lord, I wish, I want, I need. Do I include thankfulness in my prayers? Do I pray purposely for God's glory? Or do I ultimately want His? There's some thoughts. I think these are actions. I don't think these are in your books. Some acronyms that could be used. I've heard these before as well. Acts, have you ever heard the acronym of Acts? A C T S A, adoration or praise. C, confession. T, thanksgiving. S, supplication or request. Or have you heard the acronym of pray? P R A Y. Praise, repent, ask, yield. Pray, repent, ask, yield. Uh, some other thoughts. Oh, and I forgot to get that. Let's do that. Some other thoughts in regards to, and I hope that as you go through this, that even adults, we can get in, in, involved in this conversation, but some great ways in regards to prayer. Obviously, praying to the psalm we already looked at or talked about. Uh, David, all pretty much all 150 psalms are prayers to some extent, and just to pray through the psalms, pick a psalm and pray through it. Uh, I think there's a great benefit of having a prayer journal. Not everybody is into a journal. Um, but if you are into a journal, what a great opportunity that you have to have a, a journal. Keep track of prayer requests and uh, just continue to remind them. And hopefully not just have all the, the I want or they want, uh, but even have some aspects of the spiritual aspect of that. Um, certainly there's ways, so many different ways to keep track of prayer requests. Uh, we have, as a church, we have some apps that we have used. Uh, the Echo app, you can use personally and then collectively. I think you get paid now collectively, if I recall. Um, we just started in our home a, uh, a marker board for a calendar, right? So we got it for the, it's a monthly seven-day weeks. It must be five weeks maybe on the Kind of cool decoration around the outside. And then for every day of the month, so we'll have to do this, change it every time, but for every day of the month, so August 1st, August 3rd, is we have a, uh, a relative or a church member or a missionary. So I have all of them. And correct. President Trump's on there. And President Trump is on there as well. So apparently you need one more through Mr. Mr. Trump there right in the middle. I think it's he's in the middle of the month, I believe. Uh, uh, but anyway, so I think they just put all these prayer requests in the jar and they picked them out. Yeah. First one, here's who we're praying for August 1st. Here's who we're praying for August 2nd. We have that next to our table. So when, if nothing else, when we eat, we can pray for whoever it is for that day. And uh, uh, there's so many different ways that I think can help us in remembering to pray and continue to pray. Not that it's a start to stop watch. I got to figure out how to get three minutes of the day. Uh, but a, a prayer of just communicating with our God. And uh, I think all of us can have great input on how, how we put that into uh, action. I think that is all like this. Where do you want to go next? We get all the points, all the answers, all the, all the blanks filled in for everybody.
so that I can tell you what the next quiz will be for in two weeks. With God, from our hearts, from for our needs, for his praise, through Christ, according to God's will, and for God's glory. In fact, I think that literally is the entire quiz. So if you want to get it like a 100% on the quiz, just know those bullet points and then we'll be quizzed on it. But I do have, not necessarily a quiz, in fact, nobody's going to see this except for you. If you want to hand these out. I think this is just an interesting way, whether you do it now or you do it later at home. It's a great way to challenge us in regards to our own prayer. You're not turning these in. I don't need to see them. Uh, your neighbor doesn't need to see them. Uh, your coworker doesn't need to see them. Oh, it, this is just for you, but to fill out, how is my prayer now? And what would be interesting is if we redid this at the end of eight weeks, how much our answers will have changed uh, in, in that regard. I don't remember those questions. I gave them all away here. Uh, how often do you pray? I think about the content of your prayers, and this is a percentage, obviously. Ideally, I know some of us are mathematically challenged, but ideally you want all those columns to be equal to 100, how that works when you have a percentage. How important do you think prayer is compared to other Christian practices like Bible reading, church attendance, witnessing, so on and so forth? How important do you think prayer is? Uh, if, you remember, <coughs> if you memorize the verses this week, so you probably have to say that it's pretty important. What do you pray for most frequently? And again, that's just being honest. Again, nobody else will see this, so just be honest with yourself. And what tools do you use to help remind you to pray? Uh, is it Josiah on your phone? Yes. Some yes. years ago, Josiah was messing with my wife's phone, and somehow... At 4 o'clock every day. 4 o'clock every day, she gets a reminder to pray for AJ and Matt. Yes. And I don't know how Josiah did that. Me neither. But it was such a great... Hey, I kept it. yeah, so she keeps it. So every day at four o'clock, her phone buzzes. Pray for AJ Mack. And uh, I don't know how I don't know how he set that up, but it. Little, I don't know. Either. You're just pushing all the right buttons. Certainly, he didn't type that. I don't know how he did that, but somehow it worked out, and we get a reminder. And uh, so there's lots of ways that we can remind ourselves constantly be in an attitude and a heart of prayer. So we might learn how to do that. Before we go downstairs to pray. Or to play a game, we want to pray. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for all the many blessings that you continually give to us, even those that we don't ask for. Thank you for the amazing reality that we are even able to come before you in prayer because of, of because of Christ. And we thank you for that. I, I do pray that as we each, myself included, as we work on the reality of, of praying and uh, the application for our lives daily. On an hourly, minute-by-minute uh, -minute basis, I pray that you challenge us in regards to this prayer. And even in the, in the introduction of it all, I trust that none of us will feel the, the guilt of feeling like we have to now pray three minutes tomorrow, five minutes tomorrow. I love that we have that desire that we would long to pray and communicate with you. Uh, this as we go throughout our day, throughout our lives. And we thank you for that privilege. And we thank you that you are always there. You're always previous. You're always aware of our needs before we even ask them. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. So it's easier to explain maybe here before we all head downstairs what the game is. I'll tell you what I know, and then I'll let Caitlin fill in the blanks. We are going to have two different teams. So if you want to play, there are, like, pretty much right below me right here, there are chairs set up in somewhat of a circle. If you want to play the game, pick a chair. If there's not enough chairs, we'll just grab more. And uh, but we're hoping to have more than just the a few kids. So it's fine to have some adults that are playing this. It's a kind of a, a variation of musical chairs, except that no chairs disappear. But there's always going to be one chair less than what there is playing. There will be two teams. One will be called Fish, and one will be called Sally. And I will be reading, or my wife maybe will be reading. Uh, the cat in the hat. Whenever, she, in the story, the cat in the hat, whenever she says, fish, and you're on the fish team, you've got to get up from wherever you are seated and find a seat. Not where you were and not directly where you were. So if I'm sitting here and, and in the story she says, fish, and I'm on the fish team, I've got to stand up. I can't sit right back down. 
nor can I just go this and sit back down. I've got to find another chair somewhere else to go sit at. And uh, knowing that someone's always going to be left out. So you just don't want to be that left out person. But if you're the left out person, you're still in the game. So unlike musical chair, you're still in the game. You just have to get yourself back to a chair the next time. Can they move even if they're not on the right team? Yeah, so, so like if the if, next one is Sally, you can still sit down. So if you're on the fish team, but you didn't get yourself a chair, and the the other team is Sally, and the next word that comes into play is Sally, the person out can steal one of their chairs if, if you follow and you may need some help there. So fish, fish team and a Sally team. And then anytime that the phrase cat in the hat is read, that means everybody. It's a free for all, which means life and limb are in question at that point. <laughs> and we'll go until the end of the story or until we're just all tired or all the chairs are broken or the ambulance is called. And then we'll go to ice cream. And uh, so we'll head downstairs. If you're interested in taking a chair, grab a chair, and then we'll divide up into probably, I'll give you a hint. We're going to divide up into so that it's separate. So however you claim the chair, and one person has to claim this open spot, it'll be fish sally, fish sally, fish sally. So if you want somebody special on your team, sit two chairs apart from each other. <laughs> so that will work. There's a hint there. You are dismissed. We'll go downstairs. And then when the game's done, even if it's adults, you don't want to play the game, you just want to watch, the ice cream will follow afterwards. Thank you.